Okay, a couple of other materials. You know, EPDM. Mm-hmm. I have to write this stuff down. I can't remember all this stuff, all these letters. Then you got TPO. Mm-hmm. And then PVC type, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got all that correct. I don't know how to tell the difference unless it's labeled. So I don't try to figure it out. I'd be like, you know what? It's one of these. (laughs) Chris can probably answer this better for you. Well, I, so when when you're talking about EPDM, EPDM is um, hardly, you'll hardly ever see EPDM in California. It's an East Coast, you know, material. Um, and it's usually EPDM is not usually white or tan or a light color because mm-hmm. they don't care back there. <laughs> you know, right. it's, it's black or, or dark gray. Um, most of what you'll see when we're in the realm of what's called single ply, and that's what those products are, is called a single ply, um, is either going to be TPO or, or um, PVC. Um, my understanding or what I've been kind of uh, led to believe is that PVC is the superior product and that's, that's probably what you'll mostly see, but I can't tell the difference between PVC or TPO by looking at it. Does it, it look it. like it's a rubber? It's, it looks like it's kind of a plasticky film of material. Um, it comes in different mill thicknesses and different warranties, but frankly, if it's done properly, um, it's one of the best things you can do on a low slope on a, you know, on a flatter roof. Um, and, as inspectors of homes, uh, we're going to start seeing it more and more and more. Um, yeah. it's, it was relatively rare that I would inspect uh, a PVC, uh, roof maybe five, 10 years ago, but now I'm starting to see it a lot more. It's, it's specced into right. uh, new construction. It, it's a really good, good product if it's done pr- properly, if it's installed properly. Okay. And, uh, I mean, some of the roofs I, I look at like that, I, I want to call it rubber. Mm-hmm. because it just looks like it's rubber yeah you know it's it's it, it you know you walk on it, you can see it kind of move a bit and you know it's the first thing that comes to mind is rubber yeah so i don't know if it actually is a rubber are you saying it's pvc or well something pvc else? is it's um, always white pvc always white. is a kind of more of a monolithic surface it's kind of you won't see uh number one it, it comes in wider widths um the rolls are are sometimes um six feet ten feet wide mm-hmm. Um, it is heat welded together. So um, you don't see necessarily the seams as pronounced as you would on a built up roof or a modified bitumen roof, right. um, where you'll see every three feet, you'll see the side seam. And if done properly, um, I'm digressing a bit, but if done properly, you'll see asphalt bleed out for either hot asphalt roofs or for um, torch down modified bitumen roofs versus pvc the telltale sign is there's no asphalt because the asphalt's not used in that and right. there's no bleed out um it right. just kind of looks like all one surface yeah what i noticed on this particular one i'm trying to describe to you mm-hmm. is uh around the penetrations it looks pretty specific like they had kind of looks like a patch on a jacket or something mm-hmm. yes but, but it's done nicely yes is that the same stuff yes you're referring exactly to? that's yeah. pvc or okay. TPO. Mm-hmm. okay okay i want to make sure because yeah. like i said if it's not labeled <laughs> I don't know what the hell it yeah. is, you know. Um, the biggest thing with while we're on it, so PVC or TPO, when I'm inspecting those roofs, the main thing I'm looking for is um, did they use all compatible products that go with PVC? So PVC manufacturers such as Firestone and Sarnafil and, the, and these manufacturers, right. they have all their own matching detail products, scupper drains, um, uh, pipe vent uh, flashings, um, edge flashing, all that has to be compatible with PVC. In other words, in order to weld it properly, you can't just use a regular piece of metal. It has right. to have that surface right. uh, PVC to PVC. Uh, so you want to make sure that you have all all the, the same compatible products when, when looking at those roofs. And if, if so, then it's typically going to be a, a, probably a pretty good installation. And it's not going to be a handyman installation. No, sure. that that separates um, yeah. kind of, you know, your average hacky roofer from a, 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 a tech, you know, oriented type of roof company, roof contractor, when you see PVC roofs. Yeah. Um, also, it's not, um, and I, I have inspectors ask me this from time to time, because they'll, they'll go up there, oh, it's, it's rippling and it's not adhered. Well, there's adhered, fully adhered PVC roofs. 
and there's not adhered uh, wow. PVC. That's a good point. So if you see some some voids or you see some rippling, it's not necessarily a bad thing okay. versus other types of roof materials where that would be a red flag. Right, right. Like on a rolled roof, if it's all wrinkled, it could st- the sun's going to make a crack, and then you're going to have a leak right there. Yes. That's pretty obvious. Yes. And you'll trip over it. You trip over it. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> So good. Thanks for clearing that up. But what yeah. does TPO stand for? Do you know? I is that the actual name? PVC is polyvinyl chloride, I believe. But TPO is, um, gosh, I can't remember. We should Google it. Let's do it. <laughs> Ther- Let's do it. Thermoplastic. Uh, no. TPO roofing. What is TPO roof? Thermoplastic polyolefin. Poly, is that right? Polyolefin? Poly, yeah, polyolefin. Yep. So you were close. You said thermoplastic, right? I got the thermoplastic <laughs> right. A single ply white membrane used in both commercial and residential roofing. Due to TPO being a white membrane, it reflects heat instead of absorbing it. If you have a flat roof or sloped dormer over a bedroom, TPO is a great option because it keeps the... Side yeah, note on, on TPO and PVC, and I'm pretty sure EPDM, it's six months to get it now. Oh, wow. Yep, six months out. And there are there's other products, some some uh, versions of concrete tile that are also just as backlogged. Now, did, it, did the price go up 50%? Uh, the prices just continue to go up. Yeah. I don't know about 50%, but they, they just continue to go up. And um, yeah, That's crazy. All of our... Uh, shingle, all that stuff is asphalt based. So oil prices go up, they go up and somehow they yeah. don't know. They never seem to come back down. Even if oil comes back down, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got this gas station right here around the corner. Who's just screwing people left and right on prices. What? I can go, I can drive. I can six drive. Bucks. Oh, seven. What? Yeah. Six ninety four. Oh my God. A super. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm going to go there in emergencies, like if I forget to fill up or I need something to get me to my next job. But I've, I've been to other places that are at least a dollar cheaper. It's, this guy's just, just screwing with people. Makes me feel good about my electric car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get an electric van, actually. I'm, I'm waiting for Mercedes to come out with the Metris Electric. I, I already have a Metris oh. van now. Uh, lease is coming up, and uh, I, I call them. Hey, you guys going to have an electric version? Well, we have one in Europe. I'm like, I don't live in Europe. <laughs> Do you have one of those here so I can come buy it? And they didn't seem to have it yeah. in the U.S. yet. Yeah. Which kind of sucks. It'll come. So yeah. I'm just going to buy out the lease, keep it, because that van's great. Yeah. There's no issues with it. I'm just going to keep it. And then if the opportunity comes up and the yeah. electric van comes along, then I'll sell it. Yeah. It's not just the money. I just don't love st- stopping for gas. <laughs> yeah, no, everything's convenient, yeah. inconvenient nowadays. Even going to the ATM is inconvenient for me nowadays. <laughs> All right, so uh, we covered a lot of roof stuff, uh, underlayment and all that. So let's uh, talk about roof ventilation Mm. and lack thereof. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of the biggest problems I see on any new roof, uh, whether it's new construction or old construction or just a re-roof or whatever. Uh, Minimal to zero ventilation. So I just want to get your opinion on ventilation and how it affects the roof materials. Well, in theory, uh, the manufacturers, let's if we're talking about composition shingle, um, the manufacturers do have outs for their warranties if you don't ventilate properly. Um, that being said, I've never really seen... Um, roof failure due to lack of ventilation, but it certainly is huge for the efficiency of the house and how hot the attic's going to be and the HVAC efficiency. Uh, So it's really not, it's not a difficult thing to do when you're replacing a roof to add. um, And there's a lot of nice choices now, you know, the, the, um, when people maybe think of roof ventilation, they think of the, the whirly, yeah, uh, the, the turbines. Turbine, turbine vents, you know. Those are horrible. The, those things, you know, and <laughs> uh, that's another thing. We did never really did a lot of installation of those, but... Um, that should be discontinued. 
Yeah, and they, and it's funny because they're no, they're really no more um, effective than just a regular dormer vent, which um, even those are are not particularly attractive to some people. So eyebrow the, ones, you mean? Yeah, like yeah. what they call a half moon dormer vent, yeah. and but now they make these low profile. Uh, roof vents. O'Hagan is the big manufacturer. Yeah, those are great. And, and they're just low profile. They blend into the roof. They they don't. Um, I've never seen one leak. I have seen turbines leak. Yep. Turbine vents leak, and I have seen even dormer vents leak. Yep. Depending on the installation, especially if if they try and put uh, the dormer vents on a lower slope roof of wind driven rain, it can come in. But with the low profile um, uh, O'Hagan, or I'm sure there's other manufacturers. I've never seen them leak. It is critical to have both low and high uh, ventilation. So right. just putting roof vents in and there's no uh, soffit, soffit vents, vents yeah. or or um, um, gable vent, um, depending on the roof uh, shape of the roof. So you have to have both um, so that the the air can come, uh, you know, low to high and, and get escape. Yeah, out, cool out air comes top. in, pushes the heat yeah. out. So that's the that's the formula right anyway right but uh but yeah so you know as far as inspecting homes if guys out there if you're inspectors if you see a new roof and there's only one vent you might want to call that out yeah uh if there's if there's no soffit vents and there's only one vent on the roof or no vents i see it oftentimes there's no vents yeah it's like zero yep maybe a couple gable vents that is not enough yeah so I always have to call that out. Uh, that's something I recommend everyone else call out as well because, uh, like Chris said, if there is no soffit venting at all, you can put a, a row of lower ones and then you can put a row of upper ones as well. Yeah. And that'll at least yep. be You'll better. have some flow. That'll yeah. be better. So these night get some circulation. Yep. All right, cool. Thanks for answering that. Mm-hmm. Um, Underlamp covered that. Ah, another thing about... When I was on the East Coast doing roofs, we installed roof vent ridge cap. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. Ridge cap vent, mm-hmm. and uh, I never see that here. Oh, it's yeah, it's it's out there. I have not seen it here. Really? Maybe because it's so well disguised. Uh, but yeah, I see it fairly often, and it's a it's a good option. Um, that doesn't have any at all real visual, uh, you know, right. um, downside. It's got. It's um, like it's like the the tiles. Are, I'm sorry, not that the shingles are on a like a piece of uh, PVC with vent of louvers mm-hmm. in it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's different kinds. There's like yeah. one. There's one um, Cobra uh, by GAF. It's kind of just a mesh material. It's basically creating a gap between the um, where the shingles come up to the ridge line. Yep. And you leave a gap in the in the plywood on each side of the right. uh, the ridge beam, um, and you place this material so you've got three quarters of an inch gap or so between that and the actual ridge shingles, um, which will allow for uh, a very effective venting process yeah. to to the highest point in the attic. Heat rises. Yeah. That's the best place for a ridge vent. Yep. is right on the ridge. Yep, right at the, right at the top. Yes, so. So yeah, that's just something that I don't see, and I'm like, I always want. Why don't they just put that in? It's so easy to do. Yeah, because I used to install it. I was like, it wasn't yeah. hard. Yep. So um, just an option for you people out there. If you mm-hmm. got a house, uh, you're looking for ridge vents, a way to vent better. You can. That's one option for you. Mm-hmm.